that day when the bus driver asked me to get up, I had this feeling come over me. It felt like Harriet Tubman was holding me down, hands were holding me down on one shoulder, and so John of Truth hands were holding me down on another shoulder. And I was glued to the seat, and I could hear the white passioners saying, she got to move, she got to move. That's the law, she got to move. And I felt like this is my time to take a stand for justice. Hey y'all, and happy Black History Month. My name is Katusha, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I wanted to tell you guys a little story about an unsung hero of the civil rights movement, Claudette Colvin. Claudette Colvin was born in September of 1939. Raised in the segregated South Montgomery, Alabama, Colvin was a member of the NAACP Youth Council and had a close relationship with Rosa Parks. Colvin experienced the injustices of the Jim Crow era, the harsh legalities of the day, not being able to eat at the same restaurant or lunch counter as whites, not being able to go to quote unquote white schools, overall just being constantly oppressed just for the simple fact that she was black. On the day of the incident about which I'm gonna tell you, at school that day she had written a paper on the fact that black women could not go into retailers and try on shoes and clothes. People would have to step on a brown paper bag and draw out the outline of their foot so that they could see if a shoe would fit in a store because black people were not allowed to try on clothes that white people would also be trying on. So on this day, which was March 2nd, 1955, Colvin was riding the bus home from her segregated high school, Booker T. Washington High School. The law at the time said the buses were segregated as well. And although blacks were the majority of commuters daily, they were required to sit towards the back of the bus. If the bus ever became so crowded that the white seats were filled, blacks were expected to get up and move and retreat further back into the bus to make room for the white passengers. It just so happened that on this spring afternoon, a white woman boarded the bus that Colvin was riding and all of the seats in the white section were already taken. The 15 year old Colvin and another black passenger, a pregnant woman, were asked to get up and clear the entire row for the one white woman. The two women across the aisle moved but Colvin and this pregnant woman decided to stay in their seats. The white bus driver pleaded with them, trying to get them to move, give up their seats, but they refused. And so he called the police. And when the police arrived, they were actually able to get the men that were sitting behind the pregnant woman and Claudette Colvin. They were able to get those gentlemen to move and the pregnant woman at that time decided to move back the one seat and make way for the white woman. Colvin, however, she wouldn't move. You see, Colvin was inspired by the black heroes of history. She describes it as the hands of Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman holding her down in her seat, pushing her down, making sure that she couldn't stand even if she wanted to. And so Colvin was forcefully removed from the bus. And again, I remind us that Colvin was a 15 year old black girl on this bus. There were three empty seats next to her already but the white woman was not, I don't know if she didn't want to sit there or perhaps they restrained her from sitting there because it was the law that Colvin had to move as well. Even though there were three seats, she was in no way holding this white woman back from taking passage on this bus. But either way, she was forcefully removed from the bus and arrested. Witnesses said that as Colvin was removed from the bus, she was shouting, it's my constitutional right. On the way to the police station, the officers began to throw racial slurs at Colvin and they wanted to make her feel uncomfortable. So they started to speak about her 15 year old body in a sexual way. At that time, Colvin realized what danger she was in. And she started to recite the Lord's Prayer in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. This was how she kept calm. She knew that God was with her. Other kids from her school who were riding home that day as well, ran home to tell her mother what had happened. Her mom, along with their Reverend, Reverend Johnson, went to bail out Colvin on that same day. On the ride home, the Reverend said something to Colvin that she would never forget. You just brought the revolution to Montgomery. Colvin was charged with disturbing the peace violating segregation laws and assault and battery on a police officer. The charges for disturbing the peace and violating segregation laws, both charges were dropped, but somehow, even though she never touched the police officers and they forcefully removed her as a 15 year old girl from that bus, 
she somehow was convicted of assaulting a police officer. Why haven't we ever heard about Claudette Colvin? I can accept that the history books may not want to cast a light on such a powerful black figure, but I do wonder why within our own community we haven't been educated about Claudette Colvin. The reason that we've never heard about Ms. Colvin is the same reason that her court case was unsuccessful, and she did have a court case. About a year later, after all of this, in 1956, Colvin was one of five plaintiffs represented by civil rights attorney Fred Gray. They took on segregated buses in the federal court case Browder v. Gale. Although this same case was successful in the U.S. District Court for the Middle District of Alabama, the federal court case was dropped once Colvin was discovered to be pregnant. Unfortunately, Colvin faced a great injustice not just living under these Jim Crow laws that were so oppressive to her directly, but there was even injustice brought on by her own community. You see, Colvin protested bus segregation laws nine months before Rosa Parks, whose arrest was a catalyst for the Montgomery bus boycotts. But Colvin never received the same national attention. She has not been catapulted into history along with the brave Rosa Parks. Why? Well, the leaders of the civil rights movement only promoted the image of the most attractive, even though so many women came before her. Rosa Parks ended up being the face of this bus movement because she was light-skinned, she had long hair, and she was more easily comparable to white middle-class America because she also had a working-class job. Colvin was a dark-skinned, unwed, pregnant teenager with 4C hair. Parks was also much older. She was a secretary for the NAACP and naturally had the air of a leader. She demanded respect, and I have so much respect for this woman because she paved my way. She paved the way for so many women, but she did not look like me. And the stories of those women who did look like me, who looked typically black, who had African features. The stories of these women deserve to be told. They are stories of valid experiences within our community. We need to show all little black kids, regardless of what they look like and what life throws at them, that they can do great things. Let's validate their experiences by teaching them about those that they can relate to, those who came before them and had similar experiences, like Claudette Colvin. After all of this, Colvin ended up relocating to New York. It was hard for her to find work in Alabama where she had been labeled a troublemaker. She worked as a nurse's aide for 35 years until she retired in 2004. Since then, Colvin has had a street named after her, a day memorialized in her honor, and has received a congressional certificate from Joe Crowley, a U.S. congressman from New York. Of course, she deserves so much more. And although she and her family worked tirelessly to get her the recognition that she does deserve, she and the other women who stood up to bus segregation in the 50s and 60s, Colvin is very proud of what she did. And she's so proud of those who walked in her footsteps, like Rosa Parks. I salute you, you beautiful black queen. What a legacy. That's just my little thoughts, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and share it with somebody before Black History Month is over. I would really, really appreciate it, you guys. Thanks. My mom would say, yeah, Claudette, I think you was anointed by God to do this. I said, I don't think so, mom. I just had, I just felt that this was not right. I just wanted people to come together and unify and fight this segregation.